I thought engineering would be a lot of fun because the first semester we were given uh, to design a self-automated robot. A robot that finds itself and you know, does creative things. We had competitions, we won. I thought, great. I get to be an engineer, I get to create things, and it's so much fun. And then this happened. 10,000 lines of code. The entire semester we were supposed to study 10,000 lines of code for a DOS operating system that was built in 1970. I went for the first three days. I couldn't keep my eyes open. And I was like, I can't do this. This is not who I am. But then a few days later, I was like, maybe I should go check out when the mid-semester exams are. I opened the door. The professor looked at me and I looked at him and I looked at the students, they were all writing. We both realized it was the exam day and I had no clue. So I meekly asked the professor, can I take it another day? I didn't know today was the exam. He said, I know you didn't know. Uh, two o'clock, the next session is, you can come here four hours to study. I ran back to my dorms. I studied, I looked through all the uh, PowerPoints and slides and everything, tried to figure it out. Realized last minute study doesn't help much. So I took a little nap, had my lunch, went to the exam. And with the help of PowerPoint and a little bit of guesswork and some things I knew, I somehow managed to get a B. And I realized something, that college is not hard, but it's the engineering, the process that is there is 180 years old and it is not allowing me to do what I love to do. And that is that, creative problem solving. I am a creative guy, I like to solve problems and I thought that's what engineering is about. But course after course after course, I was not able to get that fulfillment of creatively solving problems. But not just solving problems, but with a purpose to make people smile, to make people happy. And that was my goal. So I was thinking as a 19 year old, what to do? And at that time I decided, why not just start solving problems? So whatever little things I could do for the university, I started doing it. I got popularity and then I started running for elections. I won. And now I had a little bit more power, a little bit more authority and a lot more people with me who are willing to help me solve bigger problems. So our, for example, our inbox used to be only 10 MB. I made it 100 MB. Our library used to be open only for eight hours a day. I made it 24 hours. And like that, I started doing things for the university that made me very popular. And it also helped me fulfill my purpose of creatively solving problems to make, to put a smile on people's face. And then I thought, why not? Why not make that as a profession? What profession would allow me to solve problems? And that is entrepreneurship. That's when I dived into entrepreneurship because that's what entrepreneurs do. There is a dire problem faced by a market and as an entrepreneur, you go and solve it and money comes as a byproduct. And that's where my journey started. And President Obama just came into power and America was facing 10% unemployment rate. And so I was, you know, a part of Startup America and I was told to go to colleges and schools like this and talk about entrepreneurship, create job creators. That was Obama's uh, push at the time. And at one of those uh, high schools, in fact, I was gifted this little plaque that says, can't spell entrepreneur, be one and hire someone who can. And that is the basis of entrepreneurship. So that's what I did. I got my friends on board, the smartest people on campus that I knew, the best coders, the best marketers, the best finance guys, and they joined me on board to build a business. We started winning competitions in US and Canada, and my friends started growing and the team started growing, and eventually this is the final semester when all of us were like, yes, we have built prototypes, patent spending, and whatnot, whatnot, but none of them wanted to actually go ahead and pursue entrepreneurship. If only the two crazy guys, me and Edward, we decided that come what may, 2009, recession, economies down, no one's investing, yet we will go out and solve problems and fulfill our dream of becoming entrepreneurs. While I was building my business, I, was, I didn't give up on actually helping my university. So we raised $800,000 to build the first bowling alley come entertainment center on campus. The university loved 
I raised money from the alumni, uh, you know, and then they loved me. So they were like, what can we do? So something amazing happened. The power of reciprocity kicked in, where when you do something for someone consistently, they're compelled to respond back to you. And that's what happened. My university started giving me opportunities that I wouldn't otherwise get. National stage to speak on entrepreneurship, winning competitions, rubbing shoulders with billionaires who are our alumni. We got all these opportunities because the university really wanted to help me. And the best way to help me was to help my startup. And we started winning and winning and winning. And we were all over the news and everything, right? And then I realized I'm happy, I'm successful. My passion, my potential, my skill, they're all aligned towards success. But what if I fail? What if things don't go too well? And it did happen. There were startups that I started after my first business that didn't go so well. Some did very, very well. And then all of this that kept me in the right peace of mind was Bhagavad Gita. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Mamayvam Chajiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana. In English, which means, you are every living entity is a fragmental part of me. Now, when I heard, that, I realized, wow, I'm a part of God, the creator of this entire creation. That's incredible. What does Krishna say more about me in the Bhagavad Gita? To me, as in the Atma, the unchanging self, the soul that doesn't die. And he says, you're indestructible. He says, you're, you never die, you're unchanging. And the best part is, he says, you're amazing. The Sanskrit word for that is Ascharyavad. Like you're amazing. I said, wow, if God is saying this, that I'm amazing, then I'm capable of doing things that are, you know, why sky be the limit, go beyond that. So I started building more businesses in spite of the difficulties that we faced with a few field startup. And then multiple businesses in multiple countries. And you know, you know what happens when, when things go well, people talk about you, especially when you're young especially when you're a college entrepreneur and, and you're doing things when nobody dares to do it because it's recession and the economy is bad and the government is, you know, we can blame everyone, but people who really want to succeed, succeed in the worst of times. And that's when you get the fame and glory. And these opened up a lot of doors for us. Now, at the same time, when you get something, when your dream is fulfilled, you want to give it to others also. So I asked my mentors and my, uh, the people who helped me, right? And these are billionaires and millionaires who helped me become who I am. From 19 to 22, my first million dollar business. It was shortened because they helped me by giving their secrets, by giving their hacks that they did and the things they did wrong so I didn't have to uh, do those mistakes. So I asked them, what can I do for you? And they said, Avello, just give it forward to the next generation. I said, let's do that. So the power of reciprocity now was coming to me and I want to reciprocate with them by giving it forward along with creative problem solving. And I did so through Kolkata Ventures. And in the last three years, I'm very proud to say I've been in India uh, for the last three years and Kolkata Ventures has been my little baby where I have been helping our next generation of entrepreneurs to get whatever they need to become an entrepreneur, whether it's guidance, whether it's funding, whether it's resources, we provide all of that. And in the last three years, we have been able to create 400 plus revenue generating startups in India. And now we are also in a few other countries. And not only that, 4,500 new jobs that didn't exist before are existing today. And that's the power of reciprocity. When I see smiling faces, smiling entrepreneurs, people whose parents didn't make more than 10,000 rupees a month, are making 70 lakhs to a crore a month. To them, this is like more than dream come true. And to me also, this is more than dream come true because this is what was given to be me by my mentors and I'm putting it forward. So it's my gratitude to those who has me become who I am today. And so right now, I make videos every week on my YouTube channel. Almost 200,000 entrepreneurs watch my videos and I mentor them virtually and, and physically we incubate them and I do whatever I can to help entrepreneurs while investing in business, while doing other things. And that's my story of becoming a struggling engineer to an entrepreneur with whatever else I'm doing today.
Thank you very much.